There's a smell I can't ignore. It's wafting through the kitchen door. It's time for me to find out more. I think it might be cake. It's on the table sitting there. I cannot help but stop and stare. And now I'm really quite aware. I think I want the cake. The decoration's just so neat. The icing looks like such a treat. It smells so chocolatey and sweet. I really want the cake. What a lot of hairy faced men there are around these days. When a man grows hair all over his face, it is impossible to tell what he really looks like. Perhaps that, that's why he does it. He'd rather you didn't know. Then there's the problem of washing. When the very hairy ones wash their faces, it must be a bigger job as when you and I wash the hair on our heads. We all want sports day to be a great success tomorrow, announced Miss Battleax. I am here to make sure no one, she glared at Horrid Henry, spoils it. Horrid Henry glared back. Horrid Henry hated sports day. Last year he hadn't won a single event. He dropped his egg in the egg and spoon race tripped over Rude Ralph in the three-legged race and collided with Sour Susan in the sack race. This is George Beard and Harold Hutchins. George is the kid on the left with the tie and the flat top. Harold is the one on the right with the t-shirt and the bad haircut. Remember that now. This is Mr. Crook, Melvin Snedley and Sulu, the bionic hamster. Mr. Crook is the one on the left with the underwear and the bald head. Melvin is the one on the right with the bow tie and the glasses. And Sulu, the bionic hamster, is the hamstery looking one in the middle with the laser eyeballs, the macrohydraulic jumpertronic legs, the super sombobo gobulating mini automoto arms, the virtually indestructible flexogromonic endoskeleton, and the twin turbo 3000 SP5 Kung Fu titanium lithium alloy processor. Remember that now too. Mr. and Mrs. Dursley of number four Privet Drive were very proud to say that they were perfectly normal. Thank you very much. They were the last people you'd expect to be involved in anything strange or mysterious because they just didn't hold with such nonsense. Mr. Dursley was the director of a firm called Grunnings, which made drills. He was a big beefy man with hardly any neck, although he did have a very large moustache. Mrs Dursley was thin and blonde and had nearly twice the usual amount of neck, which came in very useful as she spent so much of her time craning over garden fences, spying on the neighbours. The Dursleys had a small son called Dudley and in their opinion, there was no finer boy anywhere. The Dursleys had everything they wanted, but they also had a secret, and their greatest fear was that somebody would discover it. They didn't think they could bear it if anyone found out about the Potters.
The Worst Witch Saves the Day, Chapter 1. Tropical sunshine beat down on the pupils of Miss Cackle's Academy for Witches as they arrived in the schoolyard on the first day of winter term. Only the first years entered the school on foot, as they had not learnt to fly yet. But all the other pupils, and of course the teachers, soared over the high stone wall on their broomsticks like a flock of crows. A spectacular sight to see. The school year was divided into two long terms instead of the usual three. So the weather conditions were often mismatched to the girls' uniform at the very beginning of term. This is just typical, thought Mildred Hubble, wriggling her toes uncomfortably in thick grey socks and heavy winter boots. When we came back for the summer term, it was snowing and we were all frozen to death in our summer dresses. I am so excited because for the first ever time I have a real life pet. How brilliant is that? Very. It's not actually my pet. I'm looking after it for a friend, Mark Lump. The other day at school he asked me if I could help out. We're moving house so I have to stay at my granny's for a while but she doesn't have enough room for all of my pets. Straight away, I shouted, yes, I can help. I'll look after your pet. No problem at all. I was so keen that I didn't even ask what pet it was. Mark has a lot of pets. Some of them would be easier to look after than others. Mr Strong was very excited. He was going to play in the biggest rugby game of his life. He was the captain. It was his rugby team and they were going to play the best side in the world. The All Reds, who had never lost the game. He got up very early and had his breakfast. Lots of eggs to keep him strong. When they crossed the road, I crossed with them. The boy tried to shoo me away, but I ignored him. And all the while the terrier was looking back at me, often having to be dragged along. Only when they started up the hill did I recognise exactly where I was. Only then did I know for sure where they were going and where I was going too. I didn't need them as pathfinders anymore. I knew my own way. I raced past them through the wide gates at the top of the road and out into the park, the place Patrick always took me to play. The place I loved best in the whole world. I knew every path, every waste bin, every bench. There were children everywhere, dogs everywhere. And there at the top of the hill ahead of me was the bench I remembered. Our bench, Patrick's bench, my bench. There was someone up there, but I was still too far away to see who it was. I galloped up the hill faster and faster with every stride. Test your dog. Is your dog an undiscovered genius? She seems to think so. The first part of the test is based on observations you can make without consulting your dog. Answer always, sometimes or never. They said not to consult you, shush. Question one. Does your pet recognise the signs that indicate you're preparing her food? Yes. Question two. Does your dog seem to understand the signals that you're preparing for sleep and act accordingly? Yes. She yawns, she stretches. She marches to her treat cupboard for a nighttime treat. Hmm. 
Number three, when your dog is uncomfortable, does she modify her environment? For example, duck under a blanket if she's cold, always. And she tries to kick me off the chair if she's not got enough space. Three questions in, and I think she might be a genius.